Indiana University, obviously not known for its football, but could the Hoosiers have one of the most underrated players in the Big Ten next season in Andre Carter? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of Locked on Hoosiers this Friday. Your one and only daily IU podcast. We're part of the Locked on Network, your team every single day. Thank you guys for tuning in wherever you may be watching from, uh, whether it's an, a podcast app, whether it's on YouTube. You guys can subscribe, show us some love there. Thank you for making us your first visit every single day. I'm your host as always, Jacob. We're going to talk a little football today. We don't do it often, and I know it's not everybody's favorite subject, but football season is slowly approaching, and there's some intrigue about the Hoosiers this season, I think. There are a lot of new faces on this team, especially on the defensive end. We're going to talk about that some today, but for everydayers that listen to Wednesday's episode, we broke down the transfers, the the incoming players, into tiers. All conference, starter, rotation, ones for the future. We're going to do something similar with football. Look, IU was very active in the transfer portal. They brought in like a couple dozen, like over two dozen guys onto the roster via the transfer portal as well as with recruiting freshmen as or on top of that, I'm not going to dive into every single player today. That is overload, and to be honest, I don't know every single player, uh, especially when it comes to the freshmen. So I wanted to highlight a number of guys. We're going to do kind of an abbreviated version of this, and one of the guys that absolutely deserves highlighting because I think he is – potential to be very, very good is Andre Carter. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the name uh, as kind of the premier guy. The Hoosiers landed in the transfer portal. He was the highest rated player the Hoosiers got, according to 247 uh, in the transfer portal. He is a defensive end that had a number of really good seasons at Western Michigan particularly the last two years. Last season, he was uh, all-conference, had 70 tackles, 13 and a half of those for loss, seven sacks and an interception. uh, He forced a couple of fumbles as as well. This was a guy who was sought after in the transfer portal, and the Hoosiers landed him. And he he had a couple of huge games against Pittsburgh. He had 11 tackles. One of those for loss against Miami. He had a couple of uh, tackles for loss and one and a half sacks against Central Michigan. He had two sacks. Toledo, he had one and a half. And if you think back to the Hoosiers, what they've lacked in the past couple of seasons, more than the past couple of seasons, really, it's been talent on that defensive line and guys who can create chaos and havoc. Havoc is the buzzword that Tom Allen uses all the time, especially with his defensive line. He uh, is someone, Carter is, that can come in and reinstill some of that havoc. IU reworked its defensive line, and again, its defense as a whole. A lot of the names we're going to talk about today are defensive players. Carter is kind of the highlight of that, and The Hoosiers, when their defense was at its best under Tom Allen, had a defensive line that created havoc. Havoc is something Andre Carter did last season. And I think, look, it's quite a jump from the MAC in Western Michigan to the Big Ten, even if it is IU. But he has the make of someone that could be really good next season. 6'5, 273 pounds. He's going to be a basically a one and done at IU. This is his sixth year of eligibility. Uh, Someone that could come in, have a huge impact on this team and 
use that as a platform to to go to the NFL. But I earnestly think he has an all conference caliber. He was that at Western Michigan last season. And I'm not saying he's going to come in here and get 70 tackles, seven sacks, 13 and a half for loss, things like that. But I think he's someone that could come in and go a long way in improving this Indiana defense. And if that's the case, he was second team all Mac last season. Could he replicate that? I certainly think so. And if he comes in and his second, third team, all big 10, then he's had himself one hell of a season. I think he has that potential. Everything you hear out of spring practice is about how good he was, how much he stood out. You could say that's because Indiana's offensive line is what it is, but uh, I, I think he's going to be really, really good for the Hoosiers this season. He has that all conference uh, talent, that all conference uh, caliber ability. He's the only one I put in that list. There were a number of guys I put in starters. Let's look at a couple on the offensive side of the ball first. Taven Jackson is the big one. Down the line, he has all-conference caliber ability. Next season, it's starter. Technically, he has not won the job yet. But as I said kind of last season, as I've said throughout the spring, you don't really transfer into a school if you don't think that you kind of had the he- have the heads up in the quarterback competition. And I would imagine he has that heads up in the quarterback competition. He's battling it out with Brendan Soresby. We'll see. Tom Allen obviously is going to be tight-lipped about it. We're not going to know until the first game of the season. But I would be really surprised if it's not Taven Jackson. And I think he has a lot of potential, but this upcoming season, you're looking mainly as a starter versus anything more than that. Someone that I think could be another breakout player uh, on the offense is Dequeese Carter, though. Carter is a transfer from Fordham, who IU has had success or had success last season uh, getting a transfer a wide receiver transfer and so I think the Hoosiers could uh double down on that and Carter had a terrific season last year at Fordham if Indiana is able to integrate him into the offense and he's able to have a a successful season like Cam Camper did when he transferred to the Hoosiers last year Carter had 1,100 yards on 56 catches with 13 touchdowns. Cam Camper needed help last season, and when he went down, the Hoosiers had nobody close that could keep up with him. I think Indiana's going to trot out a uh, a group of Donovan McCauley, Cam Camper, and Dequeese Carter as the three wide receivers, the three starters. They have depth at the position, and we're going to mention another name here in a bit, but I think those three are going to be your guys starting. Carter is someone that, again, if the Hoosiers can continue identifying talent at the receiver position and bring them in as transfers, that's kind of the name of the game in the modern age of college football, college athletics. So those two guys are going to be part of an often a bit of a new look, but there's not a whole lot of changes. The offensive line is going to be pretty much as is. The Hoosiers added some depth. Uh, there's a couple of receivers that are going to be integrated. You obviously have a big change in Taven Jackson, but all things considered, there's not a ton of turnover there, which is good because last year it was mass turnover and we had no idea what to expect. So minimizing that turnover, I think, is a, a positive for the Hoosiers. I have some optimism about them offensively. Defensively, I don't really know what to expect. And we're going to talk about couple of starters, a couple of rotation players that the Hoosiers have on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, We'll do all that here in a moment. Let's talk about FanDuel first, though. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20. You'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. You don't even have to bet on the money line. You can bet on the over-under. You can bet on something fun like 
Who's going to be the first person to homer in the game? Swing big. You don't, you can't lose whether you get the bet right or get $200 back. So swing for the fences as they, uh, they say all it's all on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus when you win, you get your money instantly. There's not a better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel official partner of major league baseball. Big thanks to you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Every day is Monday on the show. We're going to talk some NBA offseason. A lot of Hoosiers moved around the league uh, in the offseason, so we'll get you updated on who's where and some guys who don't have a team yet, as well as summer league updates. Las Vegas Summer League kicks off this weekend. Trace has not played a game yet because he, I think, Officially, he's listed as a with out with a hamstring injury. He signed a four year deal right at the start of their the Warriors' second summer league game. If I were a betting man, if I were a FanDuel betting man, I would bet that he wanted to sit out until he got that contract signed. But a four year deal for a second round pick is abnormal. First two years are guaranteed, there's a non guaranteed year in there, and then there's a team option. So the Warriors believe in him. I think he'll play this weekend in Vegas. Jalen Hutchifino will as well. And so will Ray Thompson. So you guys can tune in and watch a number of Hoosiers take part in the Vegas Summer League. We'll recap all that on Monday's episode. Let's get back to some football. Let's talk about the defensive side of the ball, which is going to be an interesting one for the Hoosiers. We mentioned Andre Carter. I think he's going to be the star of the defense this season, whether it's good or bad. I think he's going to be a standout player. That defensive line that's reshaped, if we're looking at other guys, I would put in that starter tier. Starter tier, Philip Bleedy would be one as well at the uh, defensive tackle position. The Hoosiers needed a lot of help defensively, and they needed to retool it. Bleedy is 6'3", 295 pounds, comes from Texas Tech. He played 12 games last year, had 18 tackles, four and a half of those for loss. A uh, couple of sacks in there. He's the type of guy that I think can come in and, and be a bit of a difference maker. IU really hasn't retooled the defensive line despite it being not productive, honestly, for the last couple of seasons. And so I think these guys are going to come in. Carter, Bleedy, both those guys have been singled out or were singled out by Tom Allen. Uh, this spring as guys who looked good and are going to be big parts of this defense. So both those guys, I think, are going to hopefully help revitalize a defensive line that is just hasn't been good in the last couple of seasons and hopefully provide something up front that the Hoosiers have lacked. You want to look at some rotation players. I'll mention first the one name on offense we didn't mention before. That's EJ Williams. He is the other guy that I think is going to uh, get some snaps. 6'3", 190 pounds, comes from Clemson. Had a, a standout freshman season. Uh, as a freshman, had 24 catches, 300 yards, two touchdowns, and then had 16 catches the last two years combined. Comes to Bloomington, new uh, change of scenery. Hopefully that means some more action for him, but Indiana likes, likes to cycle through wide receivers. We know that. I don't know that he'll start. I know that he'll get some time regardless, though. So interested to see what he can bring to the table after spending three years at Clemson. But the defensive side of the ball is where I think there's going to be a lot of other changes. Jacob Magnum Farrer, which I believe is how you say that, I think he's probably going to start at linebacker. Uh, I think there's a number of guys who could factor in there. Uh, he seems like the front runner. I'm not certain enough. I, actually, yeah, I'd probably put him in that starter tier. I, I mentioned we dropped down to rotation. He probably belongs in that starter tier. Him and Bleedy, both as starter caliber players, along with Carter being the all-conference guy, where I think there's a lot more questions is in the secondary. Again, Indiana had to completely retool its secondary. There are not many names in the depth chart for the secondary that you're going to be familiar with. 
Jameer Johnson, Nicholas Toomer, Tyreek McDaniel, Kobe Miner, Jamison Kelly, all are guys who are going to factor into the secondary, get snaps to some degree. And I think a lot of those guys are going to be competing for time snaps. I keep wanting to say minutes. Minutes is not a thing in football. Competing for snaps this fall, they there might have been some separation during spring camp. Certainly fall camp will factor into that as well. The only really familiar names you're going to know in that secondary are Josh Sanguinetti, who played a bit last season when uh, Devon Matthews was hurt, and then Noah Pierre, who was a cornerback who transitioned to the Husky position. Outside of that, this is a lot of new faces, a lot of new names, a lot of guys that we don't know a lot about. There's some younger players in there. There's some transfers in there. There isn't a lot of experience in there. Sanguinetti's one. Pierre's one. Lewis Moore is going to probably start at the other safety position. Potentially, Tyreek McDaniel could mix in there as well. And then you have a lot of guys who are new to the team. Jameer Johnson, we mentioned. Nicholas Toomer, we mentioned. Both those guys are juniors as well as Kobe Miner. Uh, all those guys are juniors. So they have some experience, but not with the Hoosiers. Indiana is going to have a, a really different looking defense, which might not be the worst thing because the defense was pretty bad last season. Pretty disappointingly bad at that. I thought the Hoosiers would at least have a decent defense even for as much turnover as there was offensively, the longer the season went on, the worse the defense looked, and that was the case the year prior. Some of that might be just being worn down by being on the field so much, but there aren't a lot of names in general you're going to know on this defense from last season. Aaron Casey, you'll know. He was a linebacker last season. Miles Jackson, you might remember. He played some of the bull position, though Deshaun McCullough got a lot of those snaps, and that one still hurts a little bit. Outside of that, there isn't going to be a ton of guys you're going to be familiar with on this defensive side of the ball. So there's a lot of opportunities available for guys to, to stand out. That's why I kind of grouped a number of guys into the rotation category because at this point in July, I don't know that we really know a whole lot about this defense, about this secondary specifically, and who's going to step up, who's going to be the guys that seems like something, one of the big things to watch in fall camp. The quarterback battle is going to be one of them, obviously, but the defense, who's stepping up, who is going to start on that defense, defensive side of the ball, that's all going to be very interesting to watch. So be on the lookout. Start familiarizing yourself with some of these new names because uh, there's a whole lot of new faces that are going to be wearing that cream and crimson this fall. Let's wrap up talking some baseball, and I wish it was good news, but Indiana baseball is having a bit of an exodus of sorts. We'll talk about whether we should be worried as nearly a dozen Hoosiers are in the transfer portal and what it means for the program moving forward. We'll do all that here in a moment. So I still haven't fully calibrated, I guess, to the transfer portal because there, every time I see that a player has entered the transfer portal, uh, I immediately go to, oh, that's bad. That means bad things are happening. This means the program is in a bad way. That's probably not how we should think about the transfer portal in modern, in the kind of the modern age of uh, college athletics. That being said, it's not great that Indiana baseball is having a bit of a exodus almost on in the transfer portal. On Wednesday, Bobby Whalen entered the transfer portal, and he was the 11th different player for the Hoosiers to enter the portal. He might be the most impactful one yet. Uh, Whalen was kind of the vocal leader in the clubhouse. He was a redshirt junior. He had previously went into the transfer portal in 2021, and then returned to Indiana. I don't know that you go to the transfer portal twice and then return. Last season, he hit for 277 with uh, 70 hits, 
Uh, not a ton of extra base hits, but did his work as a center fielder and as that vocal leader for the team. It's notable. The most recent, probably the most notable so far, and what has been, like I said, 11 guys that have entered the transfer portal for Indiana. Now, my first inclination was panic, worry, whatever word you want to use. What I, as I started to look at things, a lot of these guys make sense for why they're transferring. A lot of them weren't getting playing time. They were sitting the bench. They weren't getting a lot of at-bats or they weren't getting a lot of innings. Some of them it makes, I don't want to say less sense, but it wasn't because of innings or things like that. Craig Yoho is another big one that entered the transfer portal. He had a 3.4 ERA in 37 innings last season. He had one save and was 4-1. and one. That was a notable one, but he ended up going to Arkansas. So obviously he had, I think, an idea that he could go to a bigger school and play a bigger role with the team, per perhaps. The In the grand scheme of things, that's just kind of going to be the nature of athletics nowadays, is that it's going to be really hard to build up. A t if you're in Indiana and you're not known historically for baseball, you've had good teams, but you're not known as a baseball school. It's going to be hard to build up a program and hang on to these guys for a number of years without losing them to the transfer portal and to programs that are baseball schools. SEC schools, Big 12 schools, some West Coast schools, they're going to land these guys because of those schools, I don't want to say necessarily outright care about baseball more. They do, but they have a lot more money behind it in NIL. And these guys are looking to make money, and I don't blame them in the least bit. What the flip side to that's going to be, and what I hope it can kind of turn out to be, is that if you look at Indiana with soccer, you would think that they would be able to land a lot of top soccer guys with the history Indiana has as a soccer school. To be honest, I haven't looked too deeply into the transfer portal for soccer because there isn't a ton of news there, but that's just kind of going to be the trade-off nowadays is that, and we saw with softball as well, they're going to, you're going to lose top players to the transfer portal to schools and programs that are more heavily invested into that sport. It stinks. I don't love it as a fan of that school, but I like it as someone who wants to see, these athletes get paid. So when a Taryn Kern leaves the softball program or whoever it might be, Deshaun McCullough leaves the football program, I'm happy for those guys, those people to go secure the bag and get money and get paid because it's long overdue. It just hurts to watch them leave the Hoosiers in doing it. Largely speaking, I'll be someone that roots those people on, uh, Deshaun McCullough is one that's still going to sting for quite a while, even though it shouldn't, just because he was so good. Uh, same with Taryn Kern. She was so, so good. And it's like top schools that are going after her. Your Oklahomas that were just a absolute buzzsaw this season, those are the types of schools going after her. So it stinks, but that's kind of the nature of college athletics. Uh, but back to the baseball team. The Hoosiers didn't lose any top, top players. Hunter Jesse is the only other kind of bigger name that they lost. Uh, he is an outfielder, was a, a senior last year, entered the transfer portal. He hit 281 and had 54 hits, uh, number of extra base hits. He had six homers and 12 doubles, but Indiana's top, uh, five batters are all back. Jesse and Waylon leaving hurt, but Indiana's not in a spot where they are just decimated by transfers. It seems, I mean, Indiana might not be a baseball school, but they're not not a baseball school, if that makes sense. Like, Indiana's not a softball school. It's going to be really hard to keep anybody of note 
at all at the softball program until it's built up into something with baseball. Like there is a history of them competing at the top of the conference, making the world series, things like that. You're not going to get every top player leaving necessarily. And the big one, the Hoosiers have hung on to knock on wood. Devin Taylor was on the all big 10 team and was uh, a standout freshman. I believe he was freshman of the year. Actually he was in the big 10. So they've hung on to him, but hopefully that's kind of the standard and that they're able to hang on to these guys, these really top guys in the baseball team. Uh, For now, it's a lot of guys who didn't get a lot of innings, didn't get a lot of at bats going somewhere else to try to find those innings and at bats. And I don't blame them. That's what the transfer portal is for, for getting paid and for finding the right situation. And Hey, Indiana might not be the right situation for everybody. So I, I hope that those people can go find somewhere where they can succeed and and play a, get more playing time, and, and I don't blame them for leaving, but it is noteworthy that 11 people have entered the transfer portal for the baseball team. It's also kind of an inflated roster, a little bit, so it's going to look worse than maybe it is. We'll see how the Hoosiers are in the transfer portal, if they're able to land guys, uh, any big names or anything like that, but It's worth noting, and just kind of another example of what the transfer portal is going to do to a lot of the programs uh, in the coming years and moving into the future. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Every day is again Monday on the show. We'll talk summer league. We'll talk NBA offseason and get you all caught up on all of that. And any other recruiting news that might happen, it's entering the period where – 2024 recruits are going to start making decisions. Whenever that happens, we will have the updates for you. Whether they choose IU or not, any big names that are after or that IU is chasing, we'll cover them, make their decision. So be sure to follow us on Twitter if you haven't already at LO underscore Hoosiers. Subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, Overcast, Apple, wherever it may be, YouTube especially. Leave that rating and review if you guys haven't already. Most importantly, I hope everybody has a great Friday. I hope you wrap up your week well. And as always, Elio.